my first frustrating day in the legislature, and I'm not talking about the federal legislature, I'm talking about the Newark City Council. I was a first year city council person and so frustrated, and I remember coming home in a funk, and I'll, the tenant president of some high rise public housing projects I lived in looks at me and says, what's wrong? And I poured out my heart on her, and then she, this wise elderly woman in our community, this leader in this, in this very uh, tough neighborhood with a high density, uh, uh, low income population, uh, she looks at me, I always joke I got my BA from Stanford, but my PhD on my streets of Newark, and this was one of my uh, great teachers. She looks at me and says, very simply, um, Corey, I've listened to you, but I now know what you should do. And I'm like, really? And she's like, no, I know what you should do. I said, okay, tell me. And then she crosses her arms, and she wasn't done playing with me yet, so she goes, yep, I know what you should do. <laughs> and I look at her, Miss Jones, what should I do? And she looks at me uh, almost angrily and she says, boy, you should do something. <laughs> and I said, that's it? And she goes, yeah, that's it, do something. And I say that because we allow our inability often to do everything to undermine our determination to do something. That we get caught up in what I call a state of sedentary agitation. What frustrates me now is we get so upset about what's going on in the world, but forget those 10 two-letter words, if it is to be, it is up to me. A little bit about entrepreneurship. I never really understood as a, as a kid, because my father was a postman, he carried mail on his back, and I grew up in a very blue collar town, that you could actually create businesses and have people work for you rather than you work for somebody else. I never understood that until I kind of left there and left college. And I guess I, in a way I was a political entrepreneur, but never understood the other side of it. I, don't, I think what's common to all people who are entrepreneurs and innovators is number one, you, have, you can have no sense of failure, no fear of failure. You've gotta be willing to set yourself free. So to the young people who are here, the only thing that represents failure is not trying. I try to tell my 15-year-old daughters that, you know, well, I don't wanna do track, daddy, I might not win. Well, you know, the failure is in not trying, not in the fact that you try and you, you don't win. So you first of all have to be really you can't be risk adverse to be a great entrepreneur. And if you study all of them, they're just uh, remarkable people who have a great idea and they're not af afraid that people will reject their idea. And the second thing you have to be able to do is you have to be able to, to sell that idea. And sometimes selling that idea takes a lot of time. It's like selling an idea in politics. It's not easy. And I've always said that the key to success in anything is persistence. You don't have to be the smartest person. You just have to be persistent to where you bang on the door for so long that people will go ahead and answer the door just because they want to get rid of you.